this session and three more after this to talk about. This session is going to be about Jesus' life, miracles, crucifixion, and resurrection. Yes. And the proof, uh, the evidence for that. Before we start, I'd like to remind you of some New Testament facts that I think uh, will be helpful. Uh, first of all, the New Testament was completed within 40 to 70 years after Jesus' crucifixion. So there were witnesses that could, could, could have refuted um, its contents. Uh, as you remember in the book, I, I showed you there, there are two charts of writings that compare the currency of the New Testament with the currency of other books that are relied on uh, for ancient history. I gave you a list of other documents that were found only recently that contain parts or complete parts of uh, the New Testament and the Old Testament. The Rylands Papyrus, the Bulmer Papyrus, the Chester Beatty Papyrus, the Codex Vaticanus, and the Codex Sinaiticus. Now, the New Testament is as we said, far more internally consistent than these other books. And that's, that's important because what that means is the copyists kept, kept very close to the original message, the original books that were written by the apostles and by Paul and, and the others that, that wrote the New Testament. There are ancient writers who um, have confirmed that Jesus existed and confirmed the gospel facts. I told you about Flavius, a, a Jewish historian, um, about Pliny the Younger, a Roman governor who um, wrote to the emperor at the time and asked him uh, what he should do about the Christian sect. There was Suetonius, the son of a Roman knight. There was the Talmud. I don't know if I talked about this in the last session, but the Talmud is a, a Jewish set of writings and in those writings, they refer to Yeshua. They refer to Jesus. So he was, at least to them, a historical figure. He did exist, uh, despite the comments that, that have been made. I talked to you about the Dead Sea Scrolls, how they were found, and they are um, pretty, pretty accurate and, and comparable to the uh, Old Testament and New Testament uh, documents that we've had. We talked about the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem in 70 AD, which was uh, predicted by Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, and that also supports the currency of the New Testament, because no place in the New Testament does anyone talk about the destruction of the temple. That was 70 AD. If that event had taken place before Matthew or Luke or, or some of these other writers wrote their books, it was such an important event that they would have put it in those books. And it's not in those books. So the fact that it's not in those books is some additional proof that the books were written very close to the time of the events and therefore is far more reliable than, than other books. We talked about the historical trustworthiness of Luke. We talked about uh, eyewitness accounts generally and, and how uh, they can be relied on. And we'll talk more about eyewitness accounts today about uh, Jesus' crucifixion, his resurrection, his miracles. Um, and then we also talk about the reliable copyists of the New Testament and the Old Testament. Um, so let's talk about Jesus' life and, and uh, miracles and crucifixion. The life of Jesus was witnessed or told by eyewitnesses. Matthew and Mark, Luke and John, either witnessed or interviewed witnesses. Um, Matthew and John lived it. Uh, Mark and Luke talked to, to witnesses about it. So these are good historical accounts that are based on facts as these folks learned them. And their facts do not conflict. So you can tell that it's God breathed. Peter wrote two books of the Bible. As we know, he was one of the main apostles. Um, he rejected Jesus three times and then Jesus came to him three times and, and he knew he was forgiven of it. Uh, then there was John. John was, calls himself the beloved of Jesus and he wrote five books of the Bible. Um, now John was the only apostle that didn't die a horrifying death and we'll, we'll get into it. But he wrote five books of the Bible that have not been challenged. And then there was James and Jude. 
they're particularly important. They wrote books of the Bible. They were Jesus' brothers. And in the beginning, they didn't believe who Jesus said he was, who the people around him said he was. And after James saw him, um, after he then resurrected, he became the leader of the church in Jerusalem, and he was put to death at the order of Herod Agrippa II, I think. But anyway, he was, he was put to death. So he came to believe, and Jude, another brother, came to believe. And these are all powerful testimonies. There were over 30 Jesus miracles um, identified in the Bible. They include miracles that were witnessed by thousands at the same time, by witnessed by large crowds or whole towns, a Roman centurion, they were witnessed by a synagogue leader, they were witnessed by or reported to elders, synagogue leaders, and Jewish teachers. And we'll get into what some of those include. But the fact that they were witnessed by so many people who could have contradicted what the Bible says, the fact that they were witnessed by leaders of the synagogue who had probably had access to grind about why they wanted to disprove Jesus' resurrection or Jesus' crucifixion, but they don't, is, is proof as to the existence of Jesus and, and what he did. All right. One of the first miracles that Jesus did, I think the first miracle, was where he turned water into wine. So if you want to take and count witnesses, this is one you can use. So this one was witnessed by Jesus' disciples, which included John, witnessed by Jesus' mother, witnessed by the host, the servants, the bride, the bridegroom, and the guests at the wedding. That's a lot of witnesses, and nobody comes forward and say that he didn't turn you know, water into wine. Um, there are other witnesses um, to, to things, like um, in Matthew 9, um, he talks about healing the synagogue leader's dead or dying daughter. That was witnessed by the synagogue leader, members of his household, and his daughter, and reported throughout the synagogue leader's district. That's a lot of witnesses. Again, keep in mind that the more witnesses you have that don't contradict the stories in, in the Bible, the more comfortable you can feel that those stories are accurate. Um, there was the healing of the blind man reported in Matthew that was witnessed by Jesus' disciple, the blind man, and reported throughout the blind man's district. Um, there was, as you know, where Jesus fed the thousands on a few fish and, and um, there were thousands of men, and we know that, but there were also thousands of women. The way they reported these things in the ancient world, they would, would report normally the number of men that attended, but they would not count the women and they would not count the children. So we know that even though there were thousands of men, there were probably also thousands and even more women and children who experienced this. And this happened twice. Once he fed the 5,000, once he fed the 4,000. Again, keep in mind that there's nothing there that, that we can see in any ancient document that contradicts this, this miracle. The miracle of Jesus walking on water. Um, one of the um, most important miracles in the Bible, I think. And that was witnessed by um, his disciples. And they reported in the books they wrote. It's reliable. Um, healing the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others, and feeding 4,000 uh, people. He um, also um, healed the daughter of a synagogue leader, Jairus, Jairus uh, and which was reported throughout the synagogue. Um, there's a story of him um, catching fish where they couldn't catch any fish before, which was witnessed at least by three apostles and probably by a lot of fishermen around there uh, as well. There are so many stories of the miracles that Jesus performed that have not been contradicted by anyone who could have contradicted it. Um, you would have thought that if synagogue leaders didn't want these stories to get out, they would have said something about it, and they didn't. You would have thought that Jewish elders in the communities um, would have said something about it, and they didn't. 
there is um, the resurrection, um, the story where um, uh, Sanhedrin leaders, in fact, um, assisted in the burial of Jesus, and we'll get into that in a few minutes. Um, Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection. We'll talk about the eyewitness accounts. We'll talk about the Gospels of Luke and John particularly. They saw what happened. We saw, you know, we'll talk about where Jesus' resurrection was witnessed. We'll talk about his martyred apostles. And, and they died some pretty horrific deaths. And yet, as they were dying, pretty horrific deaths, and some of them were deaths that lasted a long time, none of them denied what they saw in the Testaments, what, they, what had been reported. Organization secular writers who also talk about the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. So, let's talk about the crucifixion. This fact was, was stated in Matthew, Luke, uh, Mark, and John. Two of those, as you know, lived with Jesus, and two of those, uh, as we know, um, uh, talked to witnesses. The fact was confirmed in 1968 that the kind of crucifixion that Jesus went through was actually the kind of crucifixion that somebody could have gone through. Now, Psalm 22, 16 through 17, which was written somewhere between 1440 and 450 BC, prophesied that Jesus would be crucified, his hands and his feet would be pierced with nails. Uh, in another place in Psalm, it says that uh, dogs surround him, a pack of villains encircles him, and they pierce his hands and feet. It's an interesting um, prophecy that occurred at least a thousand years before um, it happened to Jesus. The uh, eyewitness accounts of Jesus' crucifixion. You had family, you had his disciples, you had Romans, you had hostile accusers, and other witnesses who witnessed his death and the usual events, unusual events that followed. And none of them um, have denied that he died on the cross. Um, also, we know the Bible is the most contemporary and therefore reliable ancient history. Um, that there were so many witnesses to what happened to Jesus' death, that an earthquake occurred, that the curtain was torn asunder, and that there was nobody to deny this happened when he, when he died. Um, there is no doubt that Jesus was dead in the mind of Pontius Pilate. Um, he um, went to a Roman centurion uh, and um, asked him um, and he assured him that he was dead the Roman centurion had in fact put a sword in his side and saw you know, the kind of liquid that would come out when you die um, we know that Joseph and Nicodemus both members of the Sanhedrin buried Jesus' body before the beginning of the holy day these are two very well-placed Jewish citizens. They knew that he died. They buried him. They were part of the Sanhedrin. Those are the leaders in Israel. And, and they knew that he, they buried him. Um, you got the chief priests uh, met with Pilate to demand a guard on the tomb. It was intended to keep anybody from stealing the body. Um, it didn't work. Um, apparently on the first holy day of unleavened bread was when they, they put the guard, the guard there. You saw that um, they sealed the tomb and set a watch. They thought he was dead. This is, this is all proof that Jesus in fact died. Now, the, now why do I say this? There are people who believe that Jesus was not actually dead when he was you know, put in the tomb. Well, the more witnesses you have that prove that he in fact died, the more reliable and accurate is that story and the more reliable and accurate is the rest of the Bible. 
The fact that female relatives and follower, followers of Jesus purchased spice and fragrant oils. They wouldn't have done that if they didn't think he was dead. Um, they were convinced he was dead. Then um, the women and uh, John um, saw the empty tomb. So they knew the body wasn't there anymore and that is some proof that he died but something happened to his body. That, that's also proof of the resurrection. And another proof of um, his crucifixion is that the disciples suddenly became very courageous. If you remember, right after he died, they were in a room worried about the Roman soldiers coming to arrest them as well. But after he died, and especially after they saw him, they got a whole lot more convicted, a whole lot more courageous. You know, Peter was willing to die on a cross upside down, which is one of the things that we'll talk about. Um, now, there have been skeptics that claim that um, Jesus would not have been nailed to the cross. And these are skeptics, and you know, throughout history, especially in the age of reason, they say that the only way that that um, criminals were crucified on a cross was they were tied to the cross. But in um, 1968, a skeleton of a man was excavated, and it showed that he'd been pierced in his hands, and he'd been pierced in his legs. Uh, and it showed the description of the crucifixion by using nails to pierce the hands and, and the feet was, um, was accurate and believable. Um, now, how do we know um, that Jesus was in fact crucified? As you know, it was confirmed by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John again. Um, in Psalm 22:16, we've talked about the fact that it prophesies that his hand would be pierced and his feet would be pierced. Um, we've proven the use of nails in hands and feet during crucifixion by virtue of the man that um, was uncovered. Now, Jesus' resurrection. The Bible, the most contemporaneous and therefore reliable ancient document, reports many persons who witness the resurrection of Jesus. That alone should be enough proof for anybody that the Bible said it. It's reliable. There were um, other reasons, though, to believe that the, the resurrection happened. First of all, the women witnesses who found uh, the tomb was, was open. Now, why is that particularly important? Women in that society were not allowed to be witnesses in court. They were not allowed to testify. And the fact that the witnesses, the women found and witnessed the empty tomb and they run back to the other disciples um, is a point that if you were writing that story at that time and it was made up, you wouldn't have put in it the fact that women were the witnesses to the empty tomb and then they ran back to tell the other disciples. Your story more likely would have been that somebody else did it. So that gives credibility to the story. Um, and in fact, the, the disciples did not believe the women. Uh, again, that is an indication in that society as to the kind of faith that was put in, witness, in women witness testimony. Peter and John ran to the tomb to see for themselves. John was convinced by what he saw. Um, and then the resurrected Jesus appeared first to Mary Magdalene. That's, that's important because he appeared first to a woman disciple, which in that culture, again, if they told the story, he would have appeared first, if it was made up, to a man. And the fact that the story says he appeared to Mary Magdalene is, is critical. Uh, and then Jesus appeared to more women disciples later. Um, 
Then he appeared to two disciples on the road to Emmaus, and he had to convince them who he was. And he helped them to understand that he was a resurrected Christ. And then they rushed back to the other disciples. Jesus appeared um, um, after eight days. He appeared um, to the disciples um, at a time when Thomas was present. Before that, he'd appeared to the other disciples um, as well. Jesus appeared um, to Peter three times. And he met with the disciples and 500 brethren in Galilee. All these witnesses saw him after he was dead, supposedly. Jesus miraculously, after he resurrected, filled the nets with all those fish, and he appeared to his brother James, uh, who then became a believer. All of these things are proof that he was in fact resurrected. And then he appeared to 120 disciples on the day of Pentecost. Again, nobody, nobody has challenged that as the truth. The, the disciples were then instructed by Christ for an additional 40 days, and they became courageous. One of the most important proofs is that, if you recall, Paul was a real, um, he was really vicious to the Christians. Uh, he thought it was his Jewish duty. And you'll remember on the road to Damascus how he was struck blind and how um, he was then, his eyes were then opened at, at Jesus' direction and he became one of the greatest defenders of Christianity. In fact, he may be the most influential writer of the New Testament. The fact that this vicious enemy of Christians mm -hmm. saw Christ and got turned around because of it and became a Christian is, is some more proof that, you know, there was a resurrection of Jesus, that he saw Jesus. The fact that all the apostles except John were martyred and they did it without denying Christ is really critical because of the way they died. Some were scourged, tortured, skinned alive. Some were crucified or crucified upside down. Some were beheaded, impaled, and speared. Some were stoned and sawn in half. Some were killed by arrows during crucifixion. And some were dragged through streets, ropes around their neck until they were dead. Wow. And they were often a combination of those things. Now, some of those deaths were immediate. But they knew they were going to die, and they still didn't deny Jesus. And some of those deaths took a long, long time, and they still didn't deny Jesus. In fact, Peter asked that he be crucified upside down, yeah. if you recall. And he did that because he did not want anybody to think that he had any right to be crucified right side up as Jesus had been. Um, there are two major theories that have been advanced by unbelievers. One, that someone stole Jesus' body. And the, um, and the Jews and the Romans had no motive to steal the body. And we can't figure out a motive for anybody else stealing the body. That, that those that came to look in the tomb didn't know where the correct tomb was, but they did. And if they hadn't, you could have had Nicodemus um, tell them to look in a different tomb. And that's where the body is, and he never did that. And he was a member of the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin could have produced the body from the right tomb to stop the resurrection stories. And they never did that. So that is proof of the resurrection as well. If the account had been made up, no ancient um, author would have used women as witnesses. We've talked about that. The changed lives of so many people are yet another proof. The changed life of James, his brother, he didn't believe in him. The changed life of Paul. The changed life of Jude, who wrote, I think, the last book in the Bible. And all of them, because they'd seen the risen Jesus, because they knew what had happened. You know, the fact that more than 500 eyewitnesses saw the risen Jesus and didn't contradict these statements is pretty telling. Let's talk about how some of these 
where some of these apostles died particularly. Andrew was scourged and tied rather than nailed to the cross and he lived for two days preaching. He preached for two days despite the fact that he was dying. Wow. Bartholomew, some said he was skinned alive and beheaded. Some say he was flayed by uh, a whip in Armenia until he died. And some say he was crucified upside down. Some say he was flayed with knives. That's, there are different traditions from different churches as to how he died. But none of those are very pleasant ways to go. And um, he didn't deny Jesus. James, um, he was the first apostle martyred. And he was martyred by being, being beheaded at King Herod Agrippa, uh, the first uh, order. Matthew, he was staked or impaled to the earth by spears and then beheaded. He knew what was going to happen to him and he didn't deny Jesus. Matthias, he was either stoned while hanging on a cross or beheaded or stoned and then beheaded. They're not really sure. Um, Peter was crucified by Nero. Philip, the reports of how he died varied, but um, they suggest crucifixion. Others say he was tortured and crucified. Others claim he was beheaded. Some say he was both, behead, both crucified and then beheaded. But they all died a horrible death. Simon the Zealot, um, he was crucified or sawn in half. Um, Thaddeus the Jude, he was crucified or killed by arrows during crucifixion. Thomas, doubting Thomas, was speared to death. Paul, formerly known as, as Saul, was beheaded after being tortured. Luke, the physician, was, died by being hung from an olive tree. And Mark, they placed a rope around his neck in Alexandria and dragged him through the streets until he was dead. All these people died horrible deaths. Mm. All these people lived with Jesus. All these people saw the resurrected Jesus, and none of them denied it. Mm. That's some pretty strong proof. Mm.